Okay, to make a tutorial, so we want you, you want to have a certain set of code at the beginning, and it should be a uh, R Markdown document, and we want to select from template. Now, uh, you need to have it already installed. You need to have installed Learn R, and then you want to select uh, Interactive Tutorial. When we, we use Learn R package, they they have it a template here already for us. So then, give it a name. You can call it a chapter or something. Click OK. And so we get something like this. So this is an R Markdown uh, document here. And it starts out with a section like this. Then there are these um, code chunks here. And then here's just some plain text. And here's another code chunk. And here's some plain text, code chunk, and so on. So you can put in as many code chunks as you want. And within the code chunks, is where you can run our code. And the code chunks uh, start with these back ticks, and then you need a parentheses here, and a, an R, it, since this is our code, you need an R here, and then this is a label. And uh, then we close the parentheses, so we put the R code, and then we have uh, the closing back ticks, and then we can have some text here. We can just, uh, and this will show up as text, and of course, this will show up as a header of, of one type or another. And um, at the beginning there, of an R Markdown document, there's this section. This is called, I think it's called YAML. And uh, it starts with uh, dashes here and ends with dashes here. And throughout this video, I'll re be referring to these two sections here as um, the header. It's not really a header, but I'm just calling it a header. So this is uh, a little bit about, like, I think it's, they call it metadata. Um, so it tells me the title and uh, the author and so on. And then this section is the setup section. And when we create uh, the t a document from the template, it comes with some uh, code in the setup section, but it's not typically exactly what we need. So we, we need to edit it. So I will be talking about um, how we need to edit it or what we need in there. And also a little later on, we'll talk about adding something into here as well. But anyway, I'll be referring to all both of these first two sections here as the headers, or the header section. So what extra do we need to add into the setup? Well, my students in the past have created a tutorial in Learn R, so we'll just use the code that they've developed. So let's take a look at that. So here it is. You can see that this section has more code in it than just the standard Learn R template does. So what extra do we have to add into that section, into the setup section? OK, let's compare the basic uh, uh, Learn R template, which has this in the setup, compared to this. So in here, what we've done is, so this one is the same, basically, except it says uh, echo equals false, and this one says echo equals true, but the rest is the same. So what did we add in here? Uh, so any package that you're going to use, in this may not actually be necessary, maybe I didn't need this one, but uh, any package that we're going to use in the tutorial, for example, we're going to be working with the tidyverse, and many problems are going to be um, referring to the to code that requires tidyverse. And also, this uh, is a, a table or a data frame that we're going to be using frequently. And so, uh, um, or the, rather, this has a table in it. This is a package. But it has a data frame in it uh, that we're going to be using frequently. So uh, we need to load those in up here in the setup section. So any, so you might also want to use uh, some other Maybe there's some graphing uh, package that you want to use that is not part of Tidyverse, and so it's in another package, and you want to ask a question about that, or you want to use it to generate something. You need to put it in the li in the uh, setup section. You need to um, invoke a library of of that um, in the setup section, and then also we're going to be using a package called Grade This. So uh, sort of in conjunction with Learn R. So Learn R allows us to write questions, but it doesn't allow us to 
res, uh, give a response. So if somebody gives an answer, we don't have any way to say whether the answer is correct or incorrect or any kind of response at all to evaluate the answer. But grade this as a package that can work in conjunction with Learn R to evaluate to some degree the answer that was given. So we need grade this in there. And also we need to say that tutorial options that our exercise checker is going to use grade this and it's going to be using the grade underscore learn R function from grade this. So we need to put this in there as well. Okay, so that's basically what we need in the setup section. And in here, we're going to add something else later on, which is just going to allow us to put in a CSS file or to use some CSS code to make things look a little bit prettier. So we'll put that in here, in this section up here, which I believe is called the YAML section. Okay, let's take a look at a little bit more of what's in the tutorial and how questions are written. So if we scroll down a little bit more, this is uh, just plain, this is just our markdown has nothing to do with Learn R, but it is it, Learn R is uh, written in terms of R markdown, so this is this can be part. And this is a, a this, these check marks. If we go down to this one, for example, this is a, a, a level two header. This is a level three header. So a level two header is bigger than a level three header. And we can see actually what it looks like if we, if you want to see it, you can either go up here to the tutorial pane, or you can actually run the document like this and see the tutorial. So let's just run this and see what, what these what the header generates, what a level two header looks like, what a level three header looks like. This is a level five header. This is a, a list, I believe. This will generate a list. This is, I think, a level six header. And we can also have just plain text. This is just plain text. And then we come down to a code chunk here. So let's just see what this looks like. So I'll run the document. It takes a long time to load up, so I'll stop the recording. Okay, now it's starting, but it will take a while, so I'll stop the video. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And as I said, this was a list. And I guess this one was, actually, we should go back to here. This one was a, probably this one here, level two header. And this is a level three header, EasySD. Let's take a look at that. So EasySD is a level three header. So you can see that we, we can mark this document up by using these different R markdown codes like this or like this. And in fact, a Learn R document is at its heart just a, an R Markdown document. And that's why we can run it here. This is for running an R Markdown document. And that's what this is. So the question is, how can we generate these things? This is a value of a Learn R is that we can create these questions. So how can we generate this kind of uh, box here with these different buttons? So here we have a Submit Answer button. This one, we don't have a Submit Answer button and so on. How can we do all of this? So let me kind of put these side by side. So what is the code that will generate this box here? Notice that there's a, something called a hint here. And if you click it, you get a hint. And you can, I guess there's that. And here. So here's the code for generating this box. And up here, we can have some instructions or a question. And that shows up like this as kind of plain text. So what is it that generates this? So we need so we need a code chunk, and we need to specify that a parameter here. We need to add in a kind of extra parameter here that says exercise equals true, and that means it's an exercise. It's a it's a tutorial question, and that is what will get it to render like this. And we also need to give it a label. And so actually, this is not such. This is actually the default type of label. This is not really what we want. So I would have cautioned my students not to give a label like this. The label really should be tied to the question. So maybe the label it would be better to call this something like this: our 3-2-4 easy SD. 3-2-4 easy SD. I'm not sure that we can put dots in this label or not. If we could, it would be nicer to put dots, but I. Not sure that works. We might get an error from that. So anyway, we, we put a label in, and we say that exercise is true. We need a comma there. And we do need to say that this is our code, and that will generate this. Now the next example, so we take the label, and I'm going to change the label here to what I suggested. So you have the label, and then you do hyphen hint, and that's where you can enter code that will show up here. 
So you can see this code is what's in the hint. So you can associate a hint with a question by giving the question label dash or hyphen hint. Okay, next we have, and this is a level three header. So that's this. Then we have some text. So that's this. And then next we have another code chunk and we set exercise equal to true. Don't forget we need comma here. Anyway, we have exercise equal to true. So that will, that will give us this box here. And here, whereas before we only had, I think it was only run code here. Now we have also a submit answer button. And I'm not sure whether that is generated because we set give an extra parameter here called exercise dot eval equals true. Or if it's because down here, okay, we do have a hint and it's associated with this label. And this is again, not a good name. We should have a, a, a name that reflects the, the problem that it's coming from. But anyway, I'll leave it, I'll leave it like that. And then we have a hint associated with that label. And then we also have solution. And actually it may be the fact that we have a solution associated with this problem that causes it to put a submit answer button here. And we also have, besides that, uh, again, with the same label. So this is the label print limit, which again, is not such a great label, but we also have check and that will check to see uh, whether the answer is correct. And by correct, there are different standards, but anyway, we won't worry about that here, but we'll, if we have a check here th and then we put this code in the check and this code will be the same every time. So the solution is obviously not going to be the same every time for depending on the question, we have a different solution, but in the check section or in the check chunk of code, this is all we need the same thing every time for every question. And what that will do is, okay, just pl I just press start over here. So uh, we have the question here. We can get a hint. And what is this question anyway? It says modify the following code so that the legends of the aesthetics are not shown. So I guess if we just run this code, okay, let's check the hint, which is just going to show this, but let's check it. So it says use the show legend parameter. Oh, okay. I see. So if I expand it, I can see that the legends are actually showing here. And so the, the question is saying, we don't want to show that. And we had a hint. And so we're supposed to uh, change this somehow. Now we can cheat since we can see the code we can see what we're supposed to change it to. So let's cheat and just copy this code here and put it in here. And let, this time when we run it, I guess we won't be able to see the legend. So let's check, uh, let's run the code and see what we get. Yeah, now it doesn't show the legend. Okay, now let's see the effect of the, of the check. So the check will allow us to submit the answer and get some kind of response. So I guess since we, we got the right answer, it's going to say something good about our response. So let's try it. Okay. Lovely job. Correct. So that's what this will generate. It will check it, see if it's the same as what the solution was. And if it is, it'll give it a response like this. And if it's not, it'll give some other response. Okay. So then uh, we go on to the next section and here we see a next topic button. So now again, uh, we have exercise equals true, but, and we do have a solution for this. And again, this is not a good name, a good label for the problem, but that's the way it's set up here. So we have a solution. So we do have a submit answer. So I don't think actually we needed that uh, exercise dot eval equals true. I'm not sure what this does actually, but it seems like we don't really need that if we have a solution and we do have a solution here and we do have a check here. So we can, we do have a submit button here and we will get a response as to whether we got the right answer or not. Now there's another type of question we can ask and that's a quiz. And that's where we use this code. Now it's again, it's not good to give a name like that. Well, I guess you could use the word quiz in there, but you, it should be more reflective of the section that it comes from. But anyway, the code for generating a quiz looks like this. And this is from this section. So let's try and navigate to that over here. So that's three, three, one intermediate. And it's probably this quiz here. So this is what a, a quiz looks like. And you can have just this uh, one. So it's a multiple choice answer, 
uh, and you can set it so that there's only one possible answer or you can set it so that you have to check more than one box and that is done okay this is a different question so anyway this one this question this quiz has only one correct and so it won't show up as a as checkbox it'll show up as a uh, you can only select one answer but if you had given correct equals here and correct equals here if you had put this code in here as well with a comma then it would show up as uh, checkboxes like it does here so the format is you write quiz open parentheses then question you write the question and then comma and then you have answer one answer two answer three answer four as many answers as you want you see commas after each of the answers and uh, again you have you can set uh, which ones are supposed to are correct and then down here uh, close parentheses and close parentheses and the uh, of course this is in a R code chunk okay let's look at this question 331 intermediate ka 331 intermediate ka enter the code that creates the graph above or the above graph so uh, this so this was generated or shown in the question so how do you do that well you can do something like this this is one way to do it so you can put an image in so if you want to put an image in to a question you can do that you use uh, basically HTML code so you have image source so I have a, a folder called images and I have a, a picture called this and then um, you can put all there and style you can put a style which will generate the wit you can specify the width so that's one way to generate a graph, but may not be the best way because um, then you have to uh, carry all of the pictures around with you and so on. And it just might be more complicated. There's an easier way to do this. That is, instead of uh, having an image here uh, or image code here, image HTML code, you could just run the code that will generate this, um, this, this graph uh, up here. So you could put an R chunk right here, and you could put the code that generates this graph. Now, obviously, uh, the this, this solution to this problem will have this code, right? We must know the, this, the code that will generate it because it's, there's a solution button that must be here. So this is actually the code that will generate this graph because this is the solution to the problem. Um, so we could just take this, and instead of having this here, we could have an R, co R chunk here. And instead of uh, writing th the back ticks ourselves, if you want, you can just do this and say you want R an R chunk there and put that code there. And I guess we should give this a label. Does there need to be a comma here? No, we don't need a comma. And we could give this a label like uh, answer, uh, whatever this is, three dash three dash one intermediate uh, ka mm -hmm. ka and maybe we don't call it answer we call it graph and then uh, this will run right up here uh, after this statement so right where we want it and uh, it will generate the the graph that's needed here and we won't need the image code here, so we could delete this. We wouldn't need this. Okay, so the next thing we want to learn about is how... Uh, okay, we know how to write questions, but uh, how can we collaborate with other members of our team who are also writing questions? You can see that in this example, there were uh, three or four people, actually four people, that were writing questions. And the idea was that we would collaborate together. So I would write a set of questions and that somebody else would write a set of questions for a particular section of the text. And um, then we would want to collaborate. And collaboration in this case meant that we would look at each other's questions and comment on them and give suggestions. And then uh, uh, based on those suggestions, we might want to change the questions. So how do we do that? How do we um, communicate with each other? And we're going to use GitHub to do that. Okay, let's talk about how to collaborate with your group on GitHub. 
So if you haven't already connected to the repository, you first need to do that. So I'm just going to make a new repository and show you how I would connect to such a repository. So I'll just call it connect, and I will put in a few of these. Okay, for some reason, if I check this one, it doesn't work. And I'm using the GNU license, and I'll just create the repository. Now, you wouldn't need to create a repository. I'm just doing this to show you how to connect to a new repository a repository that you haven't already connected to. So you can see that we only have one branch here, but we can create new branches. And uh, I have generally done that for each of the students. So, but I could uh, create a new branch just by new branch. So now I'm on new branch, but I just go back to the main branch. But you would want to work just on your own branch. But first, you need to connect. So let's see how you do that. So you would go to here and copy this. And then you would go to uh, RStudio. We're talking about doing this through RStudio. And you would create a new project. And you'd want version control because uh, we're talking about connecting it to GitHub and Git. Then you would paste in that URL here. It should pick up the name from the URL. And you would sort of pay attention to where you're putting this project. But that's just so that you know where to find it. And then uh, create the project. And hopefully now it will be connected. And um, you should have this git tab up here as well. And so now you can um, upload files and make changes to files and so on. So I could like uh, say new code here. And uh, I'll save this as a with a sample. Save it. And I can uh, then go to git and I choose the files that I want to uh, upload to Git. Now, typically, this and this you would, wouldn't would include. These the project. This is like your R project file. You wouldn't put that in Git, typically. And I guess you wouldn't put this in Git either. But this is the new file. So let's say I wanted to add that. So this is called staging. But uh, we do it just by checking the box here in our studio. If you're working just with the command prompt or the bash, git bash, then you would do it slightly. You would do it differently, but here we're doing it in our studio. And then after you've done that, you want to commit, um, and this is the only file that's going to be included in the commit. And then you should give a message. So created first file and commit, and then close it. Now, actually, I made a mistake, but because the first thing you should do is pull um, before you do a, a commit and a push. And I didn't do that. Maybe I should just do that now. So let me try pulling. OK, it says already up to date, so that's good. I don't have any conflicts then. So now I can push. OK, and it's hopefully done. And I can check that by going back to GitHub and uh, going to, I think I just go here, yeah, and just refresh the page. And now I have that sample R file. And uh, I do have the commit listed here. Now I'll create one more file. So back in our studio, this time I'll create um, the template for a learn R tutorial. And uh, but that's just well. Let's do it. Um, so I'll, new file and um, um, so that's an R Markdown document, but it's a template. It's a special R Markdown uh, document that has learn R 
code in it. So anyway, let's open it up. Now, for this to make any sense, you have to have um, Learn R already uh, installed in your uh, R Studio, but uh, I do have it. So I will have this option here, Interactive Tutorial. There are other options I guess I could use. I don't really know what most of these are. GitHub Document Markdown, that might be interesting. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to use the one that I here and give it a name like a new tutorial or something like that. I hope that works. And click OK. OK, so this is a what's called a Learn R tutorial. And uh, basically, it's a, tu uh, it's a way to write questions and make a tutorial in, in R that uh, you can distribute to other people. And if you want to see what it looks like, what you do is you run to see what any um, R Markdown file looks like. You would run it, and this is an R Markdown uh, document. It happens to be a, a Learn R tutorial, but that's a R Markdown document. So you can run it, and the output looks like this. And this is a sample tutorial, so it's it's not uh, particularly informative, but it's a, it's a, just a sample code or for a sample tutorial. So anyway, that's what this looks like. Now I'll just so this is a file. It's a uh, new file in my uh, R Studio in this particular project, and I think I've already saved it. And so actually, if I check files, it should be here. And uh, Actually, it's in here, and there it is. And I guess since I ran it, it also created this document, which is actually the document we just saw. Uh, so it when I ran it, it actually created an HTML document, and that's now in there as well. And I can open it in an editor, or I can open it in the browser. And here's this, I guess, the same it doesn't actually show up very well here. wonder what it shows like. If I try it in here, let's see what that looks like. Now, that doesn't show up uh, the way I want it either. Anyway, we have uh, these two files are here. In fact, the whole folder is there. So let's uh, stage this. So we can stage the whole folder. We click on here, and it will show us all of the files inside there, and we can upload both of them, but let's not upload this one. Um, let's just up upload this one. And uh, so now, and we can decide which branch we want to upload to. And uh, here you would choose your branch. I called it new branch, but you would you should see your branch here, and you would choose your branch. You don't want to do it to the main. We want to leave main kind of sacred, and no one will will play with that. So I'll choose a uh, new branch, and it says uh, it gives me a message says I switched to new branch, and I will close this. And when I switch to new branch, I think um, that other file that I uploaded was to main, that is this file. I wonder if I can upload this. So it says uh, this has been moved. Well, actually, it hasn't been moved. I moved from. Uh, from the main branch to this new branch. And so it says, uh, do you want to close the file? I'll say no. And I'll say I want to save it. So now I'm going to save it in the main, into new branch as well. And now you can see that it is also in new branch, as is the new tutorial. So now I can actually upload that to <coughs> I can uh, stage that and upload it to uh, my new branch. So we're now I'm playing with new branch. Before I was just playing with main, but actually, I, but I sort of warned that we don't really want to play with main. So I'm switching to new branch just to show that. So I've staged these, and now I can commit, and I'll say learn our tutorial present and sample. Okay, and I'll commit. And it seems to have accepted it. And if it doesn't accept it, you have to look up the error code and try and figure it out. I'm not going to cover that in this video. 
Okay, now I'm going to push. Maybe I should have pulled first. Maybe I should pull first. Let's see what happens if I pull first. Okay, no problem. And then push. Okay, no problem. And now I can go to here, and I'm on main, and nothing, well, uh, I'm on main, and I, nothing has changed in main, but if I go to new branch, I now have the new tutorial, which will probably only have one file in it, and I have uh, this file as well, let's see, yeah, and uh, this branch is one commit ahead, one commit behind main. So I guess it's not up to date with main, or it doesn't match with main necessarily, but uh, it is uh, one commit ahead. I don't know why it says that actually. But anyway, let's just uh, go back to the uh, to here. Okay, now next thing is how to collaborate. So this is how to get connected, how to do staging, committing and uploading. You can also uh, pull files, but we probably don't have much need for that. But the other, the next thing is to make a comment. So that's the collaboration process. So we go, I guess we have to go back here to the start. And now we, and we can choose the branch, but we're I'll stay on this branch. It doesn't really make sense that I would comment on my own branch. Well, maybe I should, but anyway, I'll just, uh, you would uh, go to the branch of your teammates. So you'd have to go to each bra uh, teammates branch separately uh, in succession, I guess. And um, so then you would look for the commits there. And so here I have just initial commit and this second commit. So uh, you would commit, you would sorry, you would um, comment on each question um, that your teammates made. So typically a teammate will make five questions. And if you have four uh, teammates, that means 20 comments. So you would go and you would look at their question. In this case, there's no question, but you would look at their commit and you would see what what's in there and uh, you could see the changes if there are any let's actually simulate that so let's go back and do this one one more time so let's go back to our studio and go to um well i'll do it on this branch and uh, i'll go to here and i'll just make a um change here so I'm going to kind of make a cosmetic change to this file. Now, remember, we ran this, and I showed you what it looks like, so I'll show you again. OK, so this is the standard look of it. But I'm going to change the color of the buttons and the color of this, this area in here and so on. So it's going to change a little bit, cosmetic change. So I'll just make a quick copy of this. So you can see it. I'll just save that so you can see it later. And I will close this just so we can compare it. And I'll move this out of the way. And I will make a quick change here. So I will add in this code. Oops, maybe it doesn't work. Let me try that again. I will add in this code, and I'll just get rid of this. And this is going to make a little bit of a difference or in the appearance and I've added in a CSS style component and I've chosen a theme and you can look this stuff up and you can see that there are other themes that you can choose but I'll just show you I'll run this I guess I have to save it and I'll run it so actually I thought it would change this but it didn't change this but it did change part of it you can see that this was this color, and now it's this color. OK, so let's change this. I'm sorry, let's go back. And, and uh, now we will try to make a change. And we'll, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll stage the changes. So let's um, I think it's this one, and maybe this one. Actually, we're not going to include that one. So it's just this. 
and actually first, as we said, probably a good idea to first check here. Okay, okay it says already up to date. Then we will commit. And I might even put in here what I added. And commit it, close it, and push it. Okay, no, no problem there. And then let's go back to here and let's go back to connect and make sure we're in new branch. And now if we check, I only see two commits. Why is that? Let's refresh this. I'm on the wrong branch. Okay, now I have three commits, so we can look at them and add it in CSS styles. And let's look at this. And we can see, I guess the pluses here indicate that this has been added. So now we can say, leave a comment saying um, interesting uh, change in style. I will see if I can get the ribbon color to change and I will comment again if I can. So uh, now you can uh, comment on the commit and it will appear here. And if we go back to connect and go back to the same new branch. And if we check on the commits for this branch, we can see here that there was a comment. So now the user of this branch can come back and check the comments and make uh, improvements on their code accordingly. Okay, let's just check to make sure that there are a number of branches on the project that we are currently working on. So I don't mean this project. I mean the project that our, our class is working on. So let's find that project. Or rather, let's find that repository. Actually, it's right here. So here it is. And if I click on this, I can see that there are a number of branches here. And so each student would work on only their branch. If you make an upload to the wrong branch, you'll probably cause a conflict with that other person because they pro they may forget to download the changes that you inadvertently made. And uh, then they'll get into a conflict. And that makes it kind of confusing because we really haven't talked about how to clear conflict conflicts very much. So that will make it kind of problematic. Now, there are ways, easy ways to clear the conflicts, or fairly easy ways, but we didn't really talk about it. OK, one other point to make here, and that is in, we are, I am in new branch right now. And in new branch, we have these files that we talked about. But I believe that we don't have them in main. I switch to main. Uh, it even says it can't really find the tutorial, so I'll just say yes. And uh, and so uh, now I am in main, and now it does have new tutorial, which I'm not sure why that happened, but uh, it doesn't have that other file. Now let's just uh, actually, this isn't just happening in this tab, but it's actually happening on your computer. So in other words, what I'm saying is, uh, the, the name of this project is Connect, and I store all of my projects in my Documents folder. So I'm going to go to my Documents folder and find the Connect project. So I'm in my Documents folder. Here's the Connect project. Okay, now I can see that I have a bunch of files here. And if I check in here, okay, I, I'm not quite sure why this is there, but the RMD file is not here, as you can see. Now I'll go back to here. Now I'll go back here and I'll switch branches. So I will go to branch, I'm in main, and I'll switch back to here. And it says I've switched back. 
and now um, I have this here and inside there of course I have the RMD file that's where I created this file in when I was working in new branch but now let's go back and check my um, directory here so now I'm uh, it looks like it's the same directory but if you remember I when I just checked in here I didn't have the RMD file it looks like I'm in the same place because it's still called connect but actually it's not the same it's now representative of the uh, new branch and you can see now I have that now just to prove it once more if I if I go back to here and switch to main branch so it says I've switched and now if I go back here it, it doesn't I mean it's still called in my uh, Windows Explorer I still have it's still called connect and I would think I'm in the same directory but it's actually changed and if I look in new tutorial now I don't have that RMD so when you switch branches this uh, also changes your whole file structure changes okay so let's see the weekly workflow here so each uh, student is a member of the repository if you're not you have to contact me um, you'll write five questions for a particular set of sections and there'll be two easy questions two intermediate questions and one challenging question and you will label the set of questions like this like uh, this is actually the name of an exercise and then you'll say easy and then you're, you'll put your initials there and intermediate and you'll put your initials there and challenging you'll put your initials there hopefully no two students have the same initials um, the questions should be written within a learn R template and you should test it on your R studio to make sure that it works and that of course is done uh, we did that earlier so if you have an R markdown document you can run it here so you use the run document button and uh, we explained about how to use uh, what to put in the setup um, R chunk and we talked about what to put in the YAML section and then you will post this uh, you'll actually post it to Manaba but you'll more importantly you will upload your uh, questions to your branch by a certain date and you'll of course use this the commands you stage it you commit it and you push it and um, then you will uh, comment on each problem from each member of your group so that's we said if you had uh, four members in your group and there were five questions that would mean you'd have to give 20 comments hopefully it will be insightful feedback on how the problem can improve be improved to make it a better learning experience for the tutorial user and that would be due typically like a day later after the work has been uh, uploaded to github so the comments will come in and then uh, the person who wrote the questions will read all of these comments and make changes to their questions uh, on not on github but in our studio of course and then um, upload those changes commit and uh, upload them and make sure they appear correctly on github and then also upload the new version to manaba and that will be the workflow okay so that is how we will do collaboration on github group collaboration Okay, so let's just review how to get a Learn R tutorial going. And you can look up this, how to deliver Learn R tutorials in a package. It's in this page, but I think if you do a Google search for this, it might be the easiest way to find it. So let's just read through what it says. Packages are not just for functions and data. You can create a package to deliver interactive tutorials to an audience. If you want to share your Learn R tutorial with a large group of users, for example, courses where many students are likely to run the same tutorial, tutorial simultaneously. Putting your tutorial inside of a package may actually be one of the best ways to get the content to the audience. Why? Because after the package has been installed, users can 
run your tutorial locally, which means they don't have to worry about potential bandwidth limits and issues that might otherwise arise. So scrolling down a little bit uh, to this section here, make sure you've installed and loaded the following package. Now also I think we need to uh, install and load the package grade this. And uh, I think we need to have these in there, but there may be an extra step in terms of getting these available within our tutorial to everyone. Anyway, they say we need these uh, installed and loaded. So DevTools, use this, Roxygen 2, and Learn R. And in addition, we have our other. OK, now they're going to talk about uh, connecting to a GitHub repository. They said if you already know how to do that, you can skip it. But let's look at it. And they mentioned this, which is an excellent uh, book, actually. Uh, for using Git and R, and it's free and online. Okay, so we need a new repository. So if you're in my class, that means uh, you'll be using a re repository that uh, I've assigned. But if you're making your own uh, Learn R tutorial, then you'll use your own repository. Now, in this example up here, I'm using the Tidyverse tutorials repository. But for this video, I'll use this one here. So we want to click the clone or download button and copy the uh, URL. So here it would be here, and this is the URL here, and you can click this button to copy it. Okay, now we're going to create a new RStudio project via git clone. Now I already started to do something but I think it'll be good to start from scratch so let's go back to here and I will copy uh, this afterwards all this uh, code but I'll start a new project. So we do file new project version control and git and then we paste in that this uh, URL that we just copied and they say be intentional about where you tell our studio to create the project. In other words, just remember, at least remember where you put it. So we'll go to File, New Project. I'll save what I've done. This one, Version Control, and it will be a Git. This is the other one is another kind of. Okay, anyway, put this in here, and. Uh, project directory name will be here. It picked that up from the URL and uh, you know I'm going to put it in my documents folder but you put it where you want but just uh, it's a good idea to remember where you put it and create the project. And I got an error saying I already have that. And I will try it again and I wonder if I can just change this to, to that and see. I, I'm not sure if this will work but I'll try it. That is, I'm not sure if it will be some sort of conflict, but I, uh, it don't, doesn't seem to be. Okay, so they say you could have done it a different way. You could go to, um, you could, they say uh, you could have first made the project in our studio and then connected to GitHub afterwards. But we, uh, as we created our uh, project, we connected it, as you just saw, with the URL. But they're saying you could just create the project in sort of in a standard way and then create it and then connect it later, but we didn't do that. Okay, so currently there's sort of nothing in here. There's not even a, a file in here. And if we, well, let's see, is that quite true? There is some stuff in here. And that is, I guess, because it copied what I had here um, into my account or into my uh, RStudio folder. So they say now we'll create the infrastructure to turn this R project, which we have a project, into a package. A handful of new files need to be created, but luckily we can outsource this heavy lifting which is with, uh, to the create package function from the use this package. So this is a package that I guess uh, is good for creating, I'm sorry, yeah, and we're creating new packages. Now these packages that we said we need to, to use, they do not need to be included in this statement here. They do need to be uh, run, but not 
in the tutorial itself. So they can be run just separately in a separate file during the session. So I will run these and they need to be installed as well. So that was run. Okay, next we need to run this command here. Again, this is not uh, run within the tutorial itself. So this is just in a separate file or run separately in the command prompt. And in here you need to have uh, the path um, to your working directory. So you can get that using get wd. So we'll do that first. So that's here. So I will put that path here. Like this and run that. And that will open up another R Studio. Now they say the console will ask you if you'd like to overwrite the pre-existing, and this happened before, but it didn't happen now. And anyway, uh, overwrite the existing one, and you just uh, select no. So that would be either one or uh, three. And if we look in this new pa uh, new R Studio under files, there's a lot more than there was before. So running this command, we created a sort of the what they call the scaffolding or the infrastructure for creating the package for the package, and um, so it added in some new files. So we say your project directory should end up looking something like this. Okay, now it says we need to add files and directories for a tutorial. So so this that we ran just a minute ago uh, has nothing to do with Learn R. I suppose this is just for creating a package in general. So next though we want to uh, create the Learn R tutorial and we, all, we still are using the use this package. This is it not create we, before we used uh, the command uh, create package but now we're using a different command, use tutorial. And here we have uh, the name of the tutorial. And the uh, first argument here is the file name. And the second argument is what the user will see as the name. So uh, this is just the name of the file. But here's what your user will actually see. And this is going to create another directory called INST which will be kind of an instance of our tutorial, or actually, I mean, like a tutorial. So let's run this and see that new folder and look inside of it. So right now we don't have that INST, but we are going to run this command here. So hopefully I'm going to add some new questions into the tutorial from the dates and times chapter of R for Data Science. And so I'll um, hopefully get this in, so I'll include that in the name. So I'll run this with this name. And now we can see that it did add in this. And if we go in and look at it, and go one more level down, I guess in another level down. So we could have, we could, uh, have many, I guess, different tutorials, but here's the one we're working on. And here is the RMD file. It's going to look like the RMD file that we, we were working with earlier. So let's just take a quick look at it. Oh, here it is right here. And you can see that it has this first section and it has some of what we want in here, but it doesn't have all of it. And then it has these uh, kind of sample problems that come with um, create, creating a Learn R tutorial. So actually I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this. So I'll get rid of the questions first here.
And I will actually copy from what we have. I'm going to copy the whole tutorial that was previously built. So I'm going to go and get a copy of what was previously built, which is in my here. So you don't have to do this, but uh, I'm going to just, because I'm going to be adding on to what's already here, I'll do it here. Or maybe I should have just done a separate chapter 16. But I'll just do this. And just copy it. And then go back to the previous, to the new one rather, which is here. And I will paste it in here. Now I'm going to have to remove some of this. So actually I can remove all of it and there now I think I can edit this so I'll add in that okay so now we have that set up let's go back to the instructions so they say open the RMD file and write your tutorial as you normally would, which is what I just did. I, I just copied in everything, but I do want to add more questions for chapter 16. And you can add in additional tutorials, but we only want to build one tutorial. Now they say it's time to build, uh, to, to build the tutorial, build and install it. But before we do that, I think we should go down to the end of this instructions and add in any dependencies that we might need. Now there are two types of dependent, two types of, by dependencies we need other packages that if you're asking the user to use some other package, for example, suppose you had some particular graph that you wanted them to draw and it wasn't available in Tidyverse, it was some special package that did something that you wanted them to, to be able to work with, but that package has to be sort of installed when they run the tutorial. Otherwise, they won't, even though they put in the code to generate a, a graph, they won't be able to see it within the tutorial because the tutorial won't have access to that package. Now, there are two situations. One is that you're, you're using a package um, that is on CRAN, so it's sort of very official, versus you're using a package that isn't on CRAN and might be stored somewhere. For example, it might actually be stored on somebody's GitHub account, and you want to use that package. So there's two situations, one if you're using a CRAN package, and one if you're not. So if you're using, so in any case, they're called external packages in development. No, I'm sorry. Uh, in development means that they're not available on CRAN. So if you want to use a, a something that's not on CRAN, so they, they talk about a package called grade this, we're not using that. We are using, instead of grade this, we're using Oh, I'm sorry, we are using grade this. So that applies to us. Uh, the development version of the package will need to be included as a remote dependency in the description file. So this is a little bit of trouble or a little tricky for us to do, but we have to do it. Or maybe this will actually do it. They say uh, use this will do it for us. So for example, we do need grade this. Anything else we need? Uh, we need this, but I think this should be available. But maybe I should run it just in case. I should run this and this. I'm not sure about these. Probably you have to add these in as well. So I just copied that, and then I'm going to... So for grade this... Um, sorry, for the other ones, we do it differently. But for grade this, I do it this way. So use development package. In the other one, it's going to be a different command. It's going to, for packages that are in CRAN, you, you use this. Uh, OK, actually, it seems like the command is the same for both of them. So somehow, it, I thought they were separate pa uh, commands. But it looks like they're both, um, it's the same command, use development package. So we will need extra, we'll need to do this for this one. But we'll also need to do it for tidyverse. And for this. So let's try running each of these. And this will affect, let's see, one thing before we do that. Let's take a look at our description file before we run this. So right now it looks like this. 
and here by the way is where you can add in the author's information now if you want to add more than one author you have to enca en encapsulate this in a C function like this and you have to list um, each person with as a, in other words you create a vector out of the out of this but we won't do that right now and I guess we should also edit this description and the title and I did that here and I didn't make too much but I just put this in here and then I think that what's going to be in here will change after we run the next few lines of code that we were planning to run so let's see if that happens let's close save this and close it and go back and run these now so we, are, we need to grade this we need tidyverse and we need this so let's run it so I guess I should give this an okay that they're going to add this into the description file and I'll say yes well, maybe that worked so imports this and this and remotes grade this I'm not quite sure why that is and this okay they also say you can open the description file and edit your package metadata and you can um, see a resource for suggestions but we did some of that already okay now going back up to the top of this instruction page or not the top but uh, before we already did this create the learn our tutorial so we we ran this command we gave remember we we gave it a, a name the a name of the tutorial where this was the file name and this was the name of the tutorial and that created an uh, inst directory and it has the rmd file in it and then I copied some new tutorial I copied an old tutorial into that rather and now and then we just installed or we set up the dependencies that was down below here but we now we've come back up here and now we want to build install and use the tutorial package so we want to build it and then we want to install it in our uh, library on our computer So first we have to navigate to the build pane in, in our studio, and then we're going to click install and restart. restart. Another way, another thing, you could do this instead of that, but let's do it with point and click. So we go to the build plane, and we want to click install and restart. And when we do that, we're, we will have built our package, and of course our package is a package with, um, with uh, Learn R in it. It's a tutorial. But let's do that to build our package. This is just for building a package in general, not specifically just uh, for Learn R. Of course, we're building a Learn R tutorial. That's what our package is. But this is just to build and uh, install a, par a package. So let's do that and save what I have. It's going to restart there. It says restarting the R session. And now we sort of have done it. That is, at least we've done it um, where it's installed in our own personal computer. So they say, believe it or not, you have now made a package with the Learn R in tutorial inside of it. You should test your package, that your package has been properly created by loading your tutorial from your installed package. So we have now a copy of the installed, of the uh, package that we just created. And also, actually, it has uh, now also available uh, on GitHub, and other people can download it and use it, and we'll see how to do that in a minute. So I think we can just run it, actually. Um, we don't need this description anymore, and uh, these. I'll just save them for reference, but you probably don't need them because this was only to build it. But if you just want to save it in case you want to remi remind yourself how to do this, of course it's all written on the um, instructions that we were following. But uh, they don't write specifically about tidyverse and this. So if you want to save it, you can save it. Okay. And here, this one is, well, I'll just save that. 
as well. So if you want to, you can just uh, run the tutorial from here because it is already written. But if you want to see it in the tutorial pane, you can also do that here. And here it is. And hopefully it will work. So it might be good to sort of spread it out and give it more space to view it. So I have other tutorials in here, but this is the one I want to run. So I'll just click on here and it starts to load up and it's a big tutorial. It's going to take a long time to load up. And it did run and here it is. And you can see that I edited the name and it does show up with the new name. I didn't add in any extra questions, however. Now, every time you add in questions, you could rebuild it. Anyway, let me just stop the tutorial and you do that by clicking here, stop. And that also stops the server. And once the server is, well, then you can also close this jobs here. Okay, so the last subject here is getting your tutorial out to your audience. And that involves commit and push to GitHub. And then once you've committed and pushed, then you can uh, give instructions to anybody on the internet on how to uh, install your package. And they just have to run this code here. And they will also have to install the learn our package. So dev tools, double colon, install GitHub. So this is a command from dev tools. And then the name of the repo, which means in this repo, this is the, and then the name of the, let's see, the name of the package. So let's see that. So first thing is let's um, go here and commit and upload or push. And we have to put all of this in there. We want that and that and that. So this is a folder. So uh, when we click here, it's going to give a bunch of extra files. They get all of them get uh, staged. We call it staging them. Namespace, I guess we need that. This and this. And then commit. So I'll give a commit message, commit it, then close it and push it. And if all goes well, you'll get this kind of message. And then hopefully we'll be able to see that here. Now, what will be new, for example, we don't have the INST here. I haven't refreshed the page yet. So hopefully we'll see that here. So I'll refresh the page. And now we see the INST folder. And actually this wasn't there before either. And so hopefully everything is there. We can sort of look inside it. And here's uh, here is the new code. And there wasn't really anything new except for the name. But that's the new uh, code. And now we would say, OK, well, this is located here and here. So we would tell someone to use it by telling them the name of the repo and the name of the package. So I get, I'm pretty sure that this is the, this would be Data Science Projects Japan, and this would be this. So you would put those two in there, and they would install it. They, they would need to have LearnR as well. And then to run it, they can run it from, from uh, the tutorial pane, should be here. Or they can run it by uh, doing this. And they say that we recommend putting these two uh, latter two instructions in a readme file. So you can do that. You should do that as well. And they give you instructions on doing that. Now, actually, in this project, I already have a readme file. And I might be able to edit it from here. I could go to here and edit it. But it may be smarter to do it 
the way they suggest. So doing these three, four steps. Now they do say that you can update the package and um, then uh, if someone uh, else, someone new uh, downloads the package or someone who has the package deletes theirs and reinstalls it, they will get the new version. So to update your package after your package has been installed by your users, you can continue to update or add tutorials. Each time you make changes to the content of your packages, you must build and install and restart the package locally before pushing the changes to GitHub. Users then can, uh, can then access the updated content by simply reinstalling your package. So they won't automatically get the new version unless they reinstall. It's not like there's some connection to their local installation of your tutorial. They have to reinstall it. 